Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, we're still here. Here, welcome back to another episode of the Chit Chat Podcast, a little podcast we do where we chit chat. Um, I'm like once again, I'm your truly hero. Who are you guys? Uh, it's your boy Steamboat Taco. I'm Elka Walmer. And I'm Isakai. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, we're not gonna do a little bit of pattering or whatnot from the get go. So we're just gonna go ahead and go on to weeks. Um, Kai. Because I haven't seen you in a while. How has your week been? Uh, so I finished uh, Jobless Reincarnation, which was the English title of the Isekai anime that I kept going blabbering on about. Um, mm -hmm. I was really enjoying it. Uh, I, I ended up watching all of it. I, w I was really enjoying it. It kind of went up and down for me because I was promised that this definitely isn't like other Isekais spoiler alert it is still a lot like other isekais um much for worse rather than for better um and then i was trying to explain it to a group of friends after i finished watching it so i was reading like the wikipedia plot synopsis not thinking it was going to spoil anything too heavily because i had already watched the first season and then i found out that the <laughs> show gets even worse so i will not be watching past season one um it's like it was a cool idea having like a, a 36 year old dude get shoved into like a bait like his his reincarnation into another world is not oh i i woke up at, in, in uh twink anime boy body and now i'm gonna go on adventures he's literally birthed as a baby and then has to spend several years like adjusting to being a child and like the fact that the fantasy language is not a language that he normally speaks so he has to learn it and figuring out the mechanics of magic but he's also a shit tier otaku so of course he fucking trollops around looking for girls panties uh and at the series low point is super hyped to fuck a 12 year old girl so uh if those aren't deal breakers for you Jobless reincarnation's pretty solid. All right. <laughs> um, I uh, will be having a new job that'll be starting on the first. So that's cool. Right on. Um, God, is that really all I did? Yeah, I think that's all I did. Cause, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've been doing that, fixing my sleeping schedule, uh, toss back onto Final Fantasy XIV, uh, still being not as much of a broke ass bitch, but still not financially stable. Um, but I'm, I'm making things work now, uh, and watching Kitchen Nightmares, but. I don't need to talk about Kitchen Nightmares. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, that's my week. Right on. All right. Uh, Knuckle Bomber? Um, let's see. So this past week, uh, I've been dealing with a whole bunch of chronic migraines. Uh, let's see. I finished the campaign for Resident Evil 7. Um, the game I thought was good up until the end. Uh, I just it, they they fucking killed it with that end. Just no. Um, uh, I also beat Serious Sam Four on that campaign with a buddy. Uh, that game was still fun. Uh, all the all the stupid one liners in that just just make the game. Uh, other than that, a um, whole lot of whole lot of nothing. Okay. All right. Is that it? Yeah. All right. Uh, Taco? Um, yeah. Uh, I just kind of jumped back into Final Fantasy, uh, catching up on the story. Um, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, not, not much else. Um, started playing Apex Legends. Uh, yeah, that's about it. 
All right. Um, as for me, uh, well, um, I put in my notice at my current job. Um, it's kind of a shock to m much multiple people there. Um, yeah, it's gonna be, honestly like, like, like I talk, like I said to everybody there. Like, I have nothing against the job, the job I'm working at right now, but it's time for me to move on and whatnot. Um, so it's kind of a. It, like despite how much we, I complain about my job and so that it's still kind of a bittersweet feeling because I've been in the job for like, you know, like oh, just about ten years now, and um, it's kind of different, really. Like it's I can't really explain. I have like I have, I have no excitement or no negativity about leaving, so that's gonna be a change. Um, I was streaming again uh, last Friday. I streamed all the song adventure in one go um i talked about how frogs are like probably one of the dopest things ever that fucking nature has did its thing for and um i made uh knuckle bomber like very disturbed when i was talking like big the cat um then uh on on that the after that weekend uh me Uncle Bomber and Taco, we were actually, we watched uh, Modoc on Hulu. Um, yeah, it was, I, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Modoc. It was, it was pretty good, I think. Um, afterwards, uh, I started rewatching The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> and then I just, I just, I streamed Apex with, uh, Steamboat and Uncle Bomber yesterday, and I'm just catching up on Final Fantasy 14 right now. Yeah. Uh, how <laughs> how is Apex Legends? Um, me and me and Taco were talking about this uh, last night during the stream. Uh, how initially I was very I was against Apex Legends due to the fact that uh, um, essentially EA just took uh respawn and told them to like you know hey fucking make this make this battle royale game and stuff and don't m fucking work on titanfall and whatnot but um overall like i've been i've been enjoying it i've been having fun with it um i'll be it i suck horribly in apex legends i've been having my uh fresher enjoyment especially playing with other people with uh other people and whatnot um yeah I'd, I'd say i recommend if you want if you don't want to deal with like not fortnite you know, if you don't want to deal with Fortnite, uh, play Apex. I think it's a good, uh, it's an enjoyable battle royale and whatnot. But you know, my you can take my um, my advice with however way you take anything else I say. So it's really up to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, I think that's been our weeks. Like it's been a pretty uneventful a uh, few weeks for all of us here at Evil Squirtle, looks like. So, um, yeah, uh, let's get on to the topic, right, guys? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> ah. Oh, fuck. Uh, water. All right. So, um, top for today, guys. I want to talk about fan service. Um, now, initially, when it comes, when the first thing comes out, especially in like the, in the kind of community we go, like the anime and manga community, a lot of people, a lot of people assume that fan service usually generates towards like, you know, uh, anime bitches in bikinis and upskirt shots and whatnot. But, um, on, when it comes to, when it comes to a better fan service, um, it's usually, you know, just a kind of a nod to the fans. Yeah. Um, so I want to I want you guys to talk about kind of your own uh, own enjoyment in regards to fan service and any any fan service that really pops out for you guys in regards to uh, any sort of media that you guys enjoy. Yeah. Uh, why don't you start us out, Joe? Okay. So um, I love panty shots. I'm not gonna lie. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, let's see. Like I, I like, 
a lot of games that we play, uh, all of us play, um, are obviously from when we were younger and whatnot. Um, and for me, some like some some of my favorite, obviously my favorite, um, fan, my favorite fan types of fan service go from uh, the mostly from Final Fantasy and Sonic, actually, especially with um, Final Fantasy Nine. Um, Final Fantasy Nine is one of my favorite video games, and obviously my favorite Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasy game out of the series. Um, there's a lot of nods and allusions to uh, previous Final Fantasy games. Um, obviously, with um, how the battle system is, just standard, um, just turn base and whatnot. Uh, no, like nothing too out out there. You, it's kind of like how you play. Uh, kind of how you play Final Fantasy 6 with the trance system and whatnot um the standard the the go back the back to uh RPG back to RPG um like fantasy fantasy like the fantasy aspect like medieval-esque fantasy and whatnot um of, the, of that RPG um little tidbits in regards to like uh having all having multiple summons from back then but that's pretty much a given when it comes to Final Fantasy um, the fact that you fight the four fiends from the first game in nine, um, even from, uh, Garnet, uh, da slash daggers, real name being Sarah, which you find in, um, I forgot the place it's called. I think it's, fuck, what is that place called? But it's a place where all the summoners, uh, lived in and whatnot. Um, and also near the, in the end where, uh, Zidane mentions clouds and squalls won't stop him and stuff obviously reference to cloud and squall uh, that sounds like the very um, beginning of the game that's actually the very end it's, of the game it's at the beginning they say it in the it's play. at the end it's at the i think it's at the end though like because that's not that's not dropped at the beginning it, it is dropped um, at the beginning they say it when they're reenacting the play they might allude to it again at the end as kind of like a, a book ending thing but i know for a fact they definitely say it at the beginning because I haven't beaten Final Fantasy Nine, but I know that line. Okay. Um, but yeah, all in all, like that's one of my um, obviously one of one of the games I have probably the most fans surfacey stuff with uh, Final Fantasy fourteen being you know a, cl a very like just not even like hiding all the illusions and whatnot, um, but. In regards to Sonic, uh, you can only just go back to like the anniversary games of Sonic Generations and Sonic Mania. Um, with Sonic Generations, obviously, like they had to use a bunch of levels from the previous, um, from previous Sonic games from the classic and modern era. Um, each uh, area section from like a certain uh, age of uh, Sonic games. So you got the first three stages: uh, Chemical Plant. Uh, Green Hill and um, Sky Sanctuary being from the Genesis era. For the um, middle parts, you got Cityscape, uh, Speed Highway, and Seaside Hill, which are from the Dreamcast era, even though uh, even though that Sonic Heroes was not a Dreamcast game, but it just used the same kind of... It used the adventure, the adventure style with um, them just kind of putting that speed maxed out instead of like the standard adventure adventure 2 uh gameplay and um, then you have the modern era which is from which is uh rooftop run uh, crisis city and uh planet wisp um and i want to reflect to a time where me and squishy were first playing sonic uh generations when i got it um i never seen that man so like so nostalgic driven like so nostalgic when we were playing chemical plant and then just the first um just the first beats of the song just go out you have never seen such <laughs> it's squishy's like not the purest person <laughs> like he is he's not he's not the darkest person but i have never seen such innocence in that man's eyes before until i saw him play the chemical plant zone in Sonic Generations for the first time. Um, then of course you got Sonic Mania, which is, you know, made by, so made by Sonic fans, uh, Christian Whitehead, 
the guy who made Sonic Mania, he was he worked on the mobile ports of Sonic uh, Sonic One and Two, and um, he worked on Sonic Seed. Sonic Seed, God damn it! <laughs> he worked on Sonic CD, <laughs> in which um, they added a lot of things. They made they essentially made a better version of Sonic. Uh, he's made a better version of Sonic One, Two, and CD, and we have we don't have access on consoles for that that good version of Sonic One and Two, and that is frustrating as all shit. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I, I just lo I just love like kind of all the nods and and all the nods that uh, creators give to the fans and whatnot, uh, especially of like either their previous work or their or the the past stuff that they've um that they did in that series in that said series, and um honestly I can't wait to see what they do now with uh, Sonic, and obviously what they're gonna do with uh, N Walker when that comes out for fourteen. Um yeah, uh any guys you guys want to talk about like your personal enjoyments in regards to fan service and whatnot? All ears. <laughs> uh I mean like. I don't know. I, I think fan service is nice. Uh, you know, I think a lot of long running series have it. So like, the Marvel Cinematic Universe tends to have a lot of like cute fan service moments. Uh, from right. like not cute, but like you know whatever. Like from the whole Captain America, Mjolnir wielding thing. So like the girl power moment from Endgame, like that's all like really cool like fan service I guess. Um, but like. I, I don't know. I think fan service is like a nice to have. So I don't, I don't, I don't really pay that much attention to it. Um, I'm more of like an Easter eggs guy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that's the same thing. Maybe I'm just being pedantic. But like, I don't know. I like, I like what Final Fantasy 14 does in terms of fan service, where it just kind of references like a lot of, pretty much the whole history of Final Fantasy. Like that's really cool. Yeah. All right, Kai, Knuckle Farmer. I mean, that's generally about how I feel about fan service. Uh, like what he said about the Final Fantasy stuff. Uh, other than that, I mean, it's it's nice to see, you know, cute characters and stuff like that. But, I mean, it isn't everything. It's not it's not something yeah. that I, that I will go out of my way to to have in in a game or a show. Like, I'd prefer there to be, like, other other aspects to the show or yeah. whatever else uh than just solely relying on fan service i think i think there's like a few moments when like fan service can actually like enhance the product even more um like i think one example of that would be like uh like control because control is kind of like indirectly try uh tied into like the alan wake universe and uh like it wasn't like super obvious at first right but like as you were playing the game there were like a few little like fan servicey Easter egg moments uh, that tied it into it up until like they did a DLC that just outright said it. I was like, so like my buddy who's like a big Alan Wake fan, he was just super hype about that. He was just like, oh shit! It's like it, it's like I fucking knew it. <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> That's awesome. Kai. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to echo pretty much the same sentiments here. Uh, fan service is fine, as long as it doesn't go overboard or ends up overshadowing the whole product, unless the whole idea of the product is just to be fan service, and as long as it's advertised as such, that's fine too. Uh, let's people pick and choose what they want to engage with. Um, yeah, like, I don't... Uh, I, I like... My opinion on fan service is very much like fighting games. Uh, I like the stuff that I like, and I don't like the stuff that I don't like. Uh, it's pretty much there and there. Uh, as far as like sexual fan service go, which is something that you kind of brought up a little bit, uh, obviously, if you couldn't tell from my uh, summary of Jobless Reincarnation, I'm not terribly a, a big fan of it. Like, I think mainly because a lot of this just happens to be in anime and manga, and occasionally in video games, mainly just because of how, how women sometimes dress. Yeah. Uh, like, I'm not 14 anymore. Uh, I have full access to the internet. I live by myself, so uh, anytime I want to get my rocks off, I can. 
It's available to me. <laughs> so, uh, I think it's just because, of, especially in anime and manga, how homogenized fan service has become. Like, it's we're still seeing the same bits that we saw back in the 1980s and it has there's not a whole lot that's really changed since then and it's kind of like uh, uh, yeah look uh the the girl we we saw the girl's panties and now she's she's really embarrassed and then she she slaps the the guy haha it's 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 get it it's a homage to every single fucking time this has happened for the last 50 fucking years um i think uh anime really steps up its fan service game when it just decides to uh crank the dial up to 11 and just make that the thing uh like i do think it's a little bit obnoxious in food wars but for some reason uh keijo is fantastic and i think it's just because keijo is unabashedly engaging with it uh so we we, we get to see it evolve in a new way uh and i, I think uh that would be better if we could see fan service done in a way that we haven't seen for the last 50 years since the way that we talk about sex and the way that we discuss it has changed drastically since then i don't know if it has in japan i imagine it probably hasn't too much but i mean uh it would be nice to see that maybe maybe give me a harem anime that's just about having a polyamorous relationship instead of an OTP. That'd be interesting to see. I don't know. Uh, also, like, fan service for video game characters on how they dress. Uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, like, I don't know. Uh, sometimes, I think fan service for the way that characters dress is fine as long as it makes sense for that character to wear that. Uh, like, for Bayonetta, it is fine. She's definitely a person that owns her sexuality and would would definitely walk around in that. I think that also goes the same for like characters like Jury from Street Fighter, who definitely gets off on making people uncomfortable. And what's more uncomfortable than uh, being a sexual sadist while in a street fight? Uh, <laughs> makes sense. Uh, I can get down with that. But then you have like uh, characters showing up in like banana hammocks. And it's like, oh, this is supposed to be the, the super studious school council president. And that's weird. That's That doesn't make sense. That just makes me think about how it's logically inconsistent. Uh, but, like, my opinions aren't going to change anything. Japan's still going to be real fucking weird about sex. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sex is a very strange topic in different countries. But... Nothing really, I mean, I mean, it's only just, it's just kind of a now thing where we're trying to be more, where we're being more uh, open to the idea and stuff, especially with our generation and the younger generation. Uh, our, well, our, well, our the older ones just think that's weird. No longer the young generation, Jeff. I said, our, I said our generation, the young generation. Oh. Yeah, oh. there was a, there was a yeah. comma in there oh, or I a slash. Did not hear that. Okay. Yeah, no worries, you're good. <laughs> Yeah. Um, anything else you want to talk about in regards to fan service, my dudes? I I don't have anything else at the moment. Okay. No worries. All right. Cool. All right. So uh, let's get on to news then. Yeah. Mhm. Indeed, Aroni. All right. So um. Um. So we're just go ahead and get get this news off the bat in regards to just so uh we don't have to, we don't have it on like a more on a unfortunate on a sour note um so i'm pretty sure you guys already know uh it was announced i want to say this week right uh, early this week may 20th so last week last week yes so it's not it was last week that was announced that um kentaro mura uh the Author, the creator of Berserk, uh, passed away. Um, what? Well, how he passed away due to um, essentially a, a, a rupture in his heart, right? Like, what was the actual? What was the actual like medical term for it? Uh, an aorta. Um, an 
an acute aortic dissection. Yeah. Is the scientific um, term. And uh, obviously, it hit it hit a lot of it hit the just the obviously the manga community and you know us fans like well not us fans like uh, it hit everybody really hard. Um, I was never a fan of Berserk. Well, I wasn't. I was. I enjoyed Berserk a lot, but I was never like a big fan of it. Like that was more so like Knuckle Bomber and East Kyle that were fans, and I kind of. Like I put on, like I I talked about it. Like um, I was not really a fan of it, but more most of my friends were, and stuff. And um, I did watch the old anime of Berserk, and I watched the unfortunately bad uh, CGI version, and the watched the movies that were on Netflix and whatnot. Um, but uh, it's unfortunate as someone as as a person, I like I like to draw, right? I'm not. I like I like to I like to just draw dumb comics and stuff like that. You know, like I have nobody I don't have a fan base, I have I have nobody really to show anything. But it's unfortunate though that he can't finish Berserk and stuff. Um he can Berserk can't not be finished by Mirror now. Um as of now, I haven't heard of anybody that's going to be picking up Berserk or to finish it or whatnot. Um, but it's I feel like it's one of the th- one of the hardest things for anybody to do, like for any artist, is to not be able to finish essentially what is their probably the greatest piece of work and whatnot. And um, we did joke a lot about uh, not we we as in everybody. I joked a lot about uh, Berserk's hiatus status and, you know, at the time when Guts was still on the boat and whatnot. And, you know, you can't have a, you can't have a bad ending if you don't have an ending at all, right? Um, but in all seriousness, it's really unfortunate for, for all the fans of Berserk and whatnot to not be able to see something be finished. And I know that we joke, that I joke uh, uh, in much to much against Kyle about um, Togashi not finishing Hunter Hunter and stuff, but um, it's kind of it's something that's actually really concerning in regards to the uh, whole manga, man- just the ma- just manga in general. Um, Steamboat, we were talking about it and stuff, and you were brought up about the the gratuitous hours that and time that manga has spent on their on their mangas and whatnot. Yeah, and like I mean, like I feel like Miura should be an example of this because, like, I mean, the man had full time assistance, and granted, his art was like amazing and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, Miura amongst and and you know, pretty much ninety five percent of all the creators of manga that work in the current industry have to work long, stressful hours, day after day, week after week, in order to meet deadlines. Um. And yeah. it is it is sad that he was you know like he passed away and stuff. Uh, I can't help but wonder if maybe a more lax uh, printing schedule or I don't know more humane treatment of artists uh, could have helped prevent something like this. I mean, how often do we hear? Yeah. How 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 often do we hear of these uh, you know amazingly talented manga artists having to take hiatus from overwork? Uh, how many of them suffer like injuries on their hands and and wrists and shit like that? Um, back yeah. pain and stuff. Yeah. Like a lot, a lot of like um, a lot of series from back when we were like your teens. Like for example, Hunter Hunter and uh, D Gray Man, and even One Piece had a few instances of hiatus. Mm-hmm. Um, just how those series are still going right now, and um, I don't really know what their what their work is. In, co- in regards to it, but um, I have not seen for I have not seen any sort of improvement in regards to just people trying to work around that kind of like in a better schedule. You yeah, know, there's there's been like a little bit of improvement, um, like the slightest. Uh, like Jump is kind of experimenting with a looser printing schedule with like their digital service, since they don't have to meet, yeah. you know, like an actual printing deadline so like that's that's kind of a good step forward but granted they haven't like 
widely adopted that because I think Japan still prefers like actual paper stuff. I mean, they still use fast yeah. shit. Yeah, because like, because talking about Shonen Jump and stuff like that, like they released like they released like weekly fucking like essentially what they are what are like phone books of manga and stuff like that, and um, that could range from I want to say from fifteen to seventy pa- fifteen to seventeen pages of of a char- of like just a, a chapter and stuff like weekly, and that's kind of a tight that's a that's a tight fucking schedule like especially like the whole process of like going like drawing drawing rough, drawing a rough draft going to your editor telling your like having your editor either say i don't like this or you know try again and then go back at the, going back in the grind and stuff mm-hmm. and then then you have the fucking all the ink and paint and stuff of that that your your team has to do and whatnot just so you can get that hit that weekly quota and stuff. That's, that's also assuming that you are doing well enough to be able to hire a team. Yeah. Like, um, like, like th- and, and so I guess to kind of bring it back a little bit more on track to like, uh, to Mira. And it's like, he, that, that guy, he had like a team and, uh, he was like, unlike a lot of other artists, he was also able to like hire them full time, which like, that's yeah. the thing, right? Is a lot of uh, a lot of assistants, a lot of manga assistants, work part time, which is why like a lot of them work obviously on somebody else's manga, but at the same time they're trying to push their own out. Um, yeah. Because that's not like, uh, a, you know, a living wage to be working part time for kind of penny, because like I think because yeah. I think I I don't think your publisher pays for your assistants. I think you have to pay for them yourself. Yeah, like um like we we like it's what um like what was it earlier this uh year when the Demon Slayer movie came out where a lot of people found out that uh the the creator wasn't getting paid a whole lot for the movie's uh, overall sales. I I didn't hear that, but I didn't really pay attention to that. Yeah, like um the owner got like probably I want to say maybe like 5 or 10% of the overall box office sales of Demon mm-hmm. Slayer. And um a lot of people were very upset about that because you know, like, because it, it, obviously, like, because it's um, Demon Slayer is belongs to Shonen Jump and Shonen Jump is own is owned by Shuesha and stuff. It kind of has a trickling down effect of how much the author gets paid. Yeah, and um, it's unfortunate because like, you could have probably one of the biggest, uh, the biggest like you know selling like mangas and whatnot, but. You probably won't get paid like a proper a proper wage and stuff. That's why like that's why it's that's why like I feel like you see other artists doing their own things like how um, Toriyama does artwork for like you know Dragon Quest and whatnot for Square, and um, even uh, freaking the creator of JoJo did did art for Gucci and stuff. Like, I, I feel like that, um, like. After probably your your series does a success, you won't be finding any proper proper living wage. I feel anyways. You can quote you can quote me on that. Like but you, you don't quote me on that, and I I'm I'm glad to be wrong on this one. Yeah. Um, so sorry. But, go for but it. Yeah. So so I don't know, man. Like it, it's hard, right? And yeah. So so like I I don't know. Uh. But, like, but like um taco yeah. sorry uh, i was gonna ask um you know you know more about comics like western comics and stuff like that and i want to i was gonna ask you how how does that work out here in the states for western uh, comics i mean it's not that much better uh the american comics print monthly typically very rarely is it like a like a bi-weekly thing and you typically work with a pretty decently sized team so you have you don't just have like one person and an editor and maybe their assistant. Um, in American comics, you typically work with with a penciler, an inker, a colorist, a letter, a writer. Uh, so, so the so I think they typically pay, like the publisher will typically pay per per page or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's typically for more of like the artists. Uh, 
think some of the and it, I think this also depends on contracts because a lot of those people are under specific contracts so some of them might be getting paid per issue or something it's I don't really know enough of the details on that to really kind of uh, say uh, yeah so I think the situation is a little bit better depending on how well you can negotiate your contracts okay but I don't think it's that much better because you do see writers and artists like constantly working on on multiple books so like you may have some pe some people like matt fraction who is kind of like an architect for or can be an architect for like a certain part of like the marvel universe right. so they'll typically only work on one book but they're overseeing like a bunch of other books um but sometimes you'll see like other writers uh kind of like scott snyder uh who was writing batman for a long time but at the mm -hmm. same time, he was also coming out with American Vampire at another publisher. Uh, I think he was coming out with like a different book at the same time. So he had like three or four books out with different publishers while he was working on Batman. Right on. Um, so so some of that might be you know the pa you know quote unquote the passion for writing. Some of that might just be like uh, I need to not starve. So. Yeah. So, so I don't know. Like, um, I was gonna ask because I know that, um, I know that uh, writers or artists do like do a, do a run, and I was gonna ask like how long, how long does a run like last for? Like, if so, say that me and you were told were told by DC to do like just to do Batman and stuff of like that, and we were just like, how how long how long is a run of like the, uh, of those comics a, and whatnot? A run can really differ. Uh, some artists or writers when they're put like on a trial basis uh, it can be mm -hmm. anywhere from like 6 to 12 issues if you're if they're having you actually do like an arc um, if you're doing a run like a, like a long run uh, depending on kind of like what your plan is for it and uh, I guess kind of like your fame or, or your talent uh, can really differ um, uh, Scott Snyder is another example, as 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 a similar example, um, or I guess that's the same example. Uh, when he was working on Batman, he was working on that thing for I think like five or seven years. It was oh, just wow. him and uh, and Greg Capullo as art as as a writer artist team. Uh, mm -hmm. so like that was I think, I can't remember. I want to say that was like fifty or sixty something issues that they did once a month. So I think it was like five or six years. Um, but then at the same time, you also have some people like Jeff Johns, who is not only writing uh, his run of Green Lantern, but he was also the architect of the Green Lantern like segment for like ten years when he he like because he rebooted uh, like Hal uh, Hal Jordan, and then over like ten years set up everything. Uh, like was he the one that did the whole like emotional spectrum yeah, and stuff? Yes. Yeah, that's what I was getting to. Okay. Is that he set up all of that? Like he rebooted not just Hal Jordan, but he also kind of helped uh, reboot and redefine, redefine like the whole Lantern stuff and like the color spectrum and the emotional spectrum. Uh, mm -hmm. So that he could do like Blackest Day and, and Brightest, or Blackest Night and Brightest Day. Uh, that okay. was like a whole ten year effort. <laughs> So, so yeah, so a lot of it that, so that's that's like the thing with comics is there's not really like a standard. The only standard is typically when you buy a trade paperback, there's six issues in it. <laughs> okay. And and that DC will somehow incorporate the number fifty two. They're gonna oh, be geez. a spawner for that number. <laughs> it's the number of weeks in a year. Mm-hmm. Kai, um, you know, obviously you're you you are a berserk fan so Indeed. what do you need to say about this you are you are a big berserk fan uh yeah it, it hurts uh i like i think a few years ago maybe it was 2016 2018 uh like we had a string of celebrity deaths uh and i kind of callously made fun of these people because a lot of those celebrity deaths were from people that were like quite elderly or like we were kind of aware of their their health condition and whatnot and that you know uh, i made the the, the the dumb anime joke of uh the bad sub bad fan subtitles of people die when they are killed uh because it's not like i cared about any of them but uh 
hearing this, wow, uh, it definitely made my heart sink. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about how just how influential Kintaro was to the entire like dark fantasy genre, uh, and mm-hmm. like not just like with Dark Souls, but like just how wide that spectrum is, even over here uh, on. Uh, in the West, just how influential Berserk was to a lot of people and how many careers it started and how many people it inspired and how many things that we might not have if it weren't for Berserk being out. Um, I think uh, probably the biggest thing that I feel is kind of missing out of these discussions is obviously Berserk was a really gritty and dark fantasy story, but I think the biggest thing that made it stand out from all of these other contemporary dark fantasy stories is that for every dark bitterness of human experience, it also highlighted the the tenderness and the emotion and uh, the feeling of letting your walls come down and letting people into your life and experiencing that love and joy. Um, Like my favorite moments from Berserk are not when Guts is fully raged out going on a, a huge demon slaughtering fest. It's, the moments that he spends with Casca, it's him hearing the speech that Griffith makes about how the only person that Griffith could find in a friend is somebody who's chasing after their own dreams and their own ambition and realizing and guts realizing that he was just living for somebody else and how he wanted to stray from that. It really goes to tell you to like what berserk is actually about when you hear Guts's theme, it's not something that you would find in like a Doom soundtrack, which is what a lot of people kind of get from Berserk. It's this soft, melancholic, haunting beauty of the human experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, like, I know that the manga industry is is pretty rough, like like how we how you guys have been spent talking about. Um, and I know that for a while people were really excited when Kintaro switched from traditional uh, ink and paper art to going over to digital art. Um, and then Kintaro finding out, oh, hey, I can zoom in and uh, detail every pixel. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> uh, he, I mean, it's it's been passed around for a while now, but he was somebody that was happy doing what he did. As much as he was telling a story for us, he was telling a story for himself as well. And you could feel that love for his craft and his work. Um, so it's it's definitely unfortunate that he passed away. It's unfortunate that um, we're probably never going to get the ending that he envisioned, if he even envisioned an ending. I know like when the last Tonkoban of Berserk came out, he said that we were only just approaching the halfway mark. So... Uh, there's still tons to that hasn't been told in Guts and Casca and Griffith's story. Um, but uh, I don't know. Uh, it's like as, as much as I'm saddened by that, I'm more sad that uh, like he passed away fairly young. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, we're not going to be able to kind of see what else he could have done if after berserk he would have done anything else i know that he was helping his editors push out a a manga a new manga as well um and that i think that only had like a maybe four or five chapters um but uh i think Sorry, uh, I think you're fine, dude. Uh, I think I think probably I don't know. I'm going off on a tangent, but uh, yeah, this is rough. Yeah, I think I think one of the things that like kind of bumps me at the most. Um, again, it's just one of those things where like I don't know the the good good people don't deserve this. Uh, and yeah. it's one of those things, right? Because like we had the Kyoto animation fire. Uh, which mm-hmm. it, I mean, granted, a fire at any animation studio it sucks, and and I I hope 
none of them ever get that happens again. Um, yeah. But like, especially stinks when it was Kyoto Animation because they like they paid their animators a living wage. They were really proactive um, in like hiring and training women in the industry. They they were really proactive about helping authors get published, and then like cutting them way better deals if they adapted their their light novels into mater- into animation material. So like you know they cultivated a really good positive creative environment and you know they're the ones that kind of that literally got burned for it um yeah or not for it but you know anyways so it really sucks to yeah, see that ha- so. happen to you know kentaro mira who's once i mean apart from just being amazingly talented creating a seminal and influential piece of art that has affected just tons of things since um it's just a bummer because like like I, and I and i mentioned this before right like that that he was paying his assistant he paid he pays his assistants a living wage like kyle mentioned that he was helping them get their own stuff out and uh and he mentioned like in an interview that he said i think he said he's the only or probably like the only uh like manga artist who can who can claim that his assistants have been able to buy homes under his employment which is almost unheard of in, or pretty much unheard of in japan uh, to be able to, to work as an assistant and be able to buy a home uh, so like you know i think more than anything that speaks volumes to like the type of person he is combine that with like his optimism in a dark fantasy novel and the fact that like he actually lived out kind of the optimism of trying to like be better and kind of do a create a better part of the industry so like yeah that's i don't know it's kind of a bummer it, it, it's definitely yeah. i mean the whole thing is definitely you know sad but it's more than a bummer it's like i think it's pretty tragic especially when you consider like all the influences that he's done right everything from like clouds buster sword being inspired by by guts of Stain. Guts of Sword, um, the whole title of the Black Swordsman, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of just dark fantasy, the, the, the big Cthulian fucking nightmarish creatures that have probably oh, big ass, big ass swords in general being yeah. badass. I think that's like the monster designs probably have, have probably influenced a lot more than we realize. I wouldn't be surprised if there's like the creatures from Bayonetta. We mentioned that a little bit earlier. Uh, yeah. Probably inspired by that. Apart from the biblical descriptions, like just a lot of like that really cool shit. I don't think Miura gets enough credit for one having a person of color kind of being part of the main cast, especially in a manga from the eighties with Casca. Yeah. But also having a like a fucking like a disabled character continue to be the protagonist, uh, because Guts is missing an arm. He uses a, he uses a prosthetic. And that's yeah. Is he also missing his eye too, I, or is that got fucked I think up? So I don't know. I, I, yes, yeah. Yes. His eye, his eye is missing. Yeah, so he has like that shit, right? And like, like, and that was part of the story. It wasn't just like, a, yeah, I'm a badass dude. Here's a cool prosthetic arm. No, like he has to relearn how do you like fight with a prosthetic arm and how to get used to it. And I think at some point they even and I, granted, this is me reading about this academically because I think I saw like a video like a year or so ago talking about guts being handicapped and uh and i think it's part or at least part of his story or as as he's healing after he loses his arm he talks about having phantom pains and shit like that uh which is just stuff that like kind of doesn't really get talked a a lot about you know especially in manga and anime where like when somebody gets shit replaced like they just go off like Edward Elric never fucking brought up phantom paints, phantom limb paints. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Like, yeah. yeah as, um, as much as Berserk was about uh, tragedy and horror and the, the tragedy and the horror of humanity, it was also about the healing and coming together and making yourself whole as well. Yeah. Uh, Knuckle Bomber, do you have anything to chime in on? Um, 
not not so much because you guys already covered most of it of what I would have said. Um, like it is okay. sad about his passing. I wasn't uh, that big of a Berserk fan, like as Kyle. Uh, like I've only read a little bit of the manga. Um, I did watch all of the the old anime and the CGI movies and the the continuation of that. Um, I enjoyed all of it. It didn't like. Probably not the CGI as much as the original, but uh, it, uh, what was it? Like they did, uh, they paid tribute to him uh, in Final Fantasy XIV with the Row of Dark Knights. That's right. Um, that was that was pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, I, I participated in that. Yeah, you see a whole bunch of Dark Knights all over the place with various different weapons and stuff uh, with their camp for, or the little bonfires right in front of them. I, uh, I stumbled so into that by accident. I was like just doing dailies. And I went back <laughs> into town and there was just a string of dark nights and I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Because I, I hadn't heard about his passing at that time. Oh, that's that's fair. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing stuff like that was, was really cool. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have too much to say about it. Alright. Um, let's... Um, let's get on to the next news, uh, from us here at Evil Squirtle, Kentaro Mura, uh, rest in peace. Um, and yeah, like your work inspired a lot of people. Um, and I hope that, you know, keeps on inspiring more. I found, just found out that he was, uh, assistant to the creator of Hajime no Ippo. Uh, yeah, he uh, he helped. He helped. Uh, like when he passed away, the the creator of Hajime no Ippo, uh posted a story where like he had first met, like where uh, he or Kentaro Miura had helped him out uh, with some like something on Hajime no Ippo, uh, and then he saw that like Kentaro was doing some art, and he looked at it, and he was like, "Holy fucking shit! This is so fucking good." <laughs> god damn it and then his reaction to like it becoming berserk uh it was really touching that's awesome <laughs> all right let's get on to the oh, news oh uh, also sorry let's go uh real, sorry. No, 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 real, real fine, quick dude. thing too is uh i think the top 10 book sales on amazon the week of uh, his passing uh i think it was like eight or nine out of the 10 books were all the berserk volumes Yes, yeah. that's yeah. awesome. Um, also, so a dis- disclaimer disclaimer for everybody. Um, if you guys are listening to this, um, Berserk is really good. It's a really good story, but it is very very graphic. So, um, it is not it, without some of its some of the more problematic uh, issues aspects but, of me. But uh, it's. The issues that it, it tries to tackle are the way that Miro went about it uh, are more so somebody who is trying to meaningfully say something about those issues and incorporate them into the story and how they fit and maybe just being a little bit too clumsy at it as opposed to uh, some other series that just used it for sheer shock value. So Yeah. Um, so... But viewer discretion is advised. Yes. Thank you, Kai. You're welcome. All right, uh, let's get on to some some news. <laughs> some news to just kind of uplift the, the flip the mood. All right, so um, Virtual Fighter. Um, it was announced that I think I want to say it was early this year in uh one of the one of the conferences, one of the game conferences. I think maybe it was either earlier this year or last year that um Sega was bringing gonna bring Virtual Fighter back, and so they announced um this week that virtual fighter five ultimate showdown will be coming to the ps4 in june 1st um i have never played uh virtual fighter five i played only a little bit of virtual fighter 2 back in the day um but this is good it's gonna be good it's gonna be awesome to actually get back into it and not be not going through like not going to like to a Yakuza game to play Virtual Fighter. <laughs> I was gonna make that joke. I was gonna be like, "Oh yeah, my favorite Virtual Fighter game is Yakuza Six. 
Um, so let's talk about let's talk, I was like let's talk about Yakuza. <laughs> let's talk about Virtual Fighter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, Virtual Fighter has always been kind of like the boring fighting game to me. Uh, it just that's fair. It feels like that game that's in the background of a movie that two kids are playing that isn't a real game. Uh, <laughs> But from what I've heard from people that are, like, really into the series, it's really deep mechanically, and it's really enjoyable to get into. Uh, it's just that, like, Sega doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot with it. Like, its its releases are pretty well spaced out. Um, and it's, yeah, it's it's just kind of faded into the background thanks to stuff like Tekken and Street Fighter. Uh, and now it's trying to come to the limelight with an updated version of, of Virtua Fighter V. Um, but it's it's not going to have rollback netcode, so we'll see how that goes. I think I think yeah. part of like what's a little fun, like two things that are a little funny about um, kind of the situation around it, is that like part of the remake, because I think, so depending on which uh, publicity material you read, some of it called some of it calls it a remaster some of it calls it a remake um but i really i really feel like because because part of it is that um it was pretty much all ported over to the dragon engine that the yakuza team uses uh which is which i think they've been using since the kiwami games and it's a good i mean it's a good looking engine i mean there's a lot more particle effects that are in line with like the yakuza particle effects so like oh, there's that but uh, so I think it's a little funny that you know it was included in one of the Yakuza games, and I feel like I feel like part of this was somebody just like somebody on the team just being like, "Hey, I keep loading up Yakuza to play Virtual Fighter. Can we can we just fucking port this?" <laughs> uh, but this also <laughs> this also kind of comes in line with something that like Sega said I think like a like a couple months ago like at a stakeholders meeting or something. Where like they were talking about how they were surprised at the sales for Persona Four Golden on PC, and they were like, "Holy shit! Did you know we also have like a bunch of really amazing legacy franchises that we haven't done anything with?" Like, go back to the podcast last uh, week. We talked about yeah, we did talk news. about it, but yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so like, so I feel like this is just perfectly in line with that because they're just I I feel like somebody in the like that same motherfucker who was like, "I'm tired of loading up Yakuza to play Virtual Fighter." went up to the Sega executives and he was like, hey, can we do this? And the fucking Sega executive was just like, holy shit, we own this? <laughs> 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 fucking, yeah, let's go. Uh, I, I It is really nice to see that like Sega's like, hey, we, we have all these like old fucking... Let's do something with these things, guys. They're yeah, just, like, let's let's make some. You guys want to make some fucking money? They're just like, holy, <laughs> holy shit! Do we have more than just Sonic and and uh, Yakuza? Do we have more Persona? than Sonic and Yakuza and Hatsune Miku and Persona? Yo, yo, look at this thing I found in the bargain bin. What the fuck is a burning ranger? <laughs> Goddamn! I'm like Konami, who's just like. Ugh. Fuck it into the pachinko mine. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, hey, can I make a? Can I make a? You know, a Castlevania game. I'm oh, sorry. Did you say can you make a Castlevania pachinko? Go ahead. <laughs> hey, can we can we remaster Jeez. Metal Gear Solid Three? For what console? Is it a, if it's not a pachinko, we don't fucking want it. You mean pachinko Solid Three? Yeah. Metal Gear pachinko. Hey, hey, we're thinking about rebooting Yu Gi Oh. As a pachinko machine, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> They're both gambling. Like, <laughs> fucking right. But uh, so yeah, I don't know. This is exciting, and I think uh, uh, I don't think we got to this part of the news bit yet. But it's also being released for free. Asterisk if you have PlayStation Plus for uh, for June. Which you know, if you guys. If you guys have online, especially during this, we're still remember, so we're still in a pandemic, my peoples. So you better fucking, if you don't have PlayStation yeah, Plus, tell that to all the and you're in at Walmart not wearing a fucking mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. 
Netflix. Maybe <laughs> maybe the ultimate showdown isn't on PlayStation. Maybe it's on Walmart. Maybe it's for the soul of this nation. <laughs> this is the maybe, ultimate showdown. Maybe maybe we don't need Virtual Fighter. We need we need real a fighter. <laughs> maybe the virtual was the fighter we never learned to play. <laughs> ultimate showdown. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you were... Yeah, anyways, yes. Like, like, see, here's the thing. Like, it seems... It seems like there's going to be kind of a... Upright... A little bit... A smidge of uprising in fuel games. Like, um... I know that... Despite us making fun of Konami, I know that, um... They... Uh, they released that... They uh, showed the trailer for the, uh... Kasufuma Den game or whatever. The what? The what? Uh, it's... It's one of Konami's here. I'll, I'll show. I'll. 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 Uh, I'll um, copy the link. And I'll show you guys. So I, I heard that Konami was is trying to also do a thing where they are thinking about um, just bringing their old bringing old shit back, like look to out to outsource older like older games and whatnot. Oh, that's a Peggy eighteen. Oh. Okay, this thing. Yeah. And um, obviously, and uh, I'm not, Square. I'm, uh, not, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like we have enough side scrolling here. I'm not gonna do the last game. Sort of. And I know that Square, that Square just said, like did a little thing for Drag Quest. Did I say Drag Quest Twelve, or teasing Drag Quest Twelve, and uh, they're remaking uh, Drag Quest Three. Like a two DHC remake of it. Yeah, which I, I'm pretty sure they either borrowed the engine or they borrowed the fucking team that <laughs> that that worked on like um was it triangle strategy and uh, octopus traveler yeah but like though like they gotta um they if they if it's a team then they can't they can't they, they cannot mess this one up because i think it was dragon quest 3 that uh was the sole reason why dragon quest games are like um released on uh, on like that's other days, that's you know. Like, like a thing. What's up? I mean, that's not. Anyways, uh, they're they're still released on weekends. What? That's just an urban myth. It is. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. I know. I believed it too for years. No, it's just an urban myth. They they release them whenever the fuck they want. Uh <laughs> But yeah, no. I mean, but you. I mean, yes. You are also still correct that like it is one of the more. Uh, I guess critical games to the franchise, not necessarily um, because it forced them to release on not weekend day, uh, not weekdays. Uh, but like uh, no, because this is also the game that actually that was that actually you played as the fucking hero of legend that you heard so much about in the first two games. Yeah, you are the Goku yeah, from Smash this Brothers. Yeah, the Sword Goku. Gaku. Sword Gaku. Gaku. The sword drip. Yeah. So like, um, I'm actually gonna, I'll actually get it because I'm too. Well, fuck. What are we talking about? Uh, other games? We're we talking so, about fucking Virtual Fighter. Hold on, hold on. I want to throw in on this Dragon Quest thing. So I've got an Go interview right now with Game Informer from producer Yu Miyaki that says uh-huh. it is true. Uh, they don't release Dragon Quest. Uh. Uh, it used to launch on Thursdays no matter what. Uh, but when Dragon Three, Dragon Quest Three came out, uh, tons of kids skipped school to go buy the game, and the police actually said, "You guys need to go do something about this. This is not okay." So now Dragon Quest started being sold only on Saturdays. I thought I will I, link. I mean, I, we. I see, I, I see, I'm on. Like, please link I that. Link. I'm on the. Cause like, I will. Because the rumor that I had heard was that like. It was the government that told them to stop that. And like everybody debunked that. They're like, no, the government didn't actually fucking force yeah, them to do the anything. The government, like, it's probably like a situation where, like, there was, like, a lot of reporting on it in, like, Japanese news studio. And maybe some government officials made comments on it. But the government, like, never formally said to, to Enix, hey, you gotta change Dragon Quest's release date. Um... They probably they they probably did it in response to all of the reporting and whatnot decided to. The the interview doesn't go quite in that depth, but he, he it's just the producer saying, Yeah, we did it. Here's 
what I remember from it. But there's the, the link to that interview. Anyway, yeah, what, what about Virtua Fighter 5? <laughs> you guys got any Fighter happy five. moments of loading Yakuza to play <laughs> Virtua Fighter? <laughs> I remember I played the very first Virtua Fighter in Yakuza, and I was like, hold on a second, this is 2D and sprite animated. Where the fuck are those oh, hella God. blocky fuckers? Well, all I got to say in regards to that one, Kyle, is that freaking now if we like this following with tradition for uh, for playing Virtual Fighter 5 on Yakuza, you can now play Sonic the Fighters on fucking in Lost Judgment. Oh, well, hell yeah. not now. You got to wait for Lost Judgment. Not now, but when it comes out, yeah. which is a nice transition to the next news article. Well, that way you can just skip over our favorite memories with Virtual Fighter. <laughs> Like, yeah, man, like, but... like when I rented Virtual Fighter, I think it was 4 or 3 for the PS2, and I said, this is a Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> probably took that back to fucking <laughs> Blockbuster. <laughs> Mom, I want to play Tekken. We have Tekken at home. <laughs> Zooms out on a Virtual Fighter case. <laughs> like, <sighs> Virtual Fighter does have its place in, in the fighting game, in like, you know, fighting games and whatnot, but... Uh, I don't know. I'll play it because I have played Virtual Fighter Five. Yeah, like I'll, uh, I definitely want to give it a shot just because it's something new and like because it's free. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've kind of just slept on it because I judged it like based on its its cover value appeal alone instead of like actually giving it a shot. So I feel like I can I, I can give it that at the very least. From what I played in Yakuza Six, it seemed fun enough. <laughs> That's literally the most amount of time I have spent playing Virtua Fighter is in Yakuza 6. Uh, this this is how powerful Yakuza is. Not only can it it uh, launch its popularity in the West on its own, it's, it's bringing up other franchises. Watch, man, we're going to get a, a gritty reboot of Puyo Puyo. Oh god! Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I like Puyo. Yeah, Puyo. it's called it's called it's called Doctor Robotics Meme Meme Machine. <laughs> you mean Puyo Puyo? <laughs> Fuck! I mean, I mean, we're getting we're getting a House of Dead remake. We're getting a fucking we're getting fucking Virtual Fighter Five now. You know, either give me Jet Set or Burning Rangers, and yay! <laughs> oh, why, why, why? Hey man, we we got. We got cyber cyber rush bomb funk cyber funk bomb rush. Jeff, why, yeah, why that's you, true. Why, why do you always bet on the horse with Lucas? Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, shit! Like I get, I, God I, damn. I get you don't want to see it get shot and made to glue, but like, why do you always? I feel bad for you. That's your favorite. Your favorite horses always have Lucas. God damn. And then you there's so. Chokey. He's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so then, out of out of everybody here, who's all gonna get uh, Virtual Fighter, or are we all gonna pick it up? Yo, I mean, we all get it. Uh, I'm gonna pick it up. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Well, I don't have. I mean, I don't granted, have you have Plus, so you don't have PlayStation Plus. I do not. Oh, well then, never mind. Mm. I'll come over to your guys' place and play it. Let's see, okay. There, you go. <laughs> there we go. There we, go. we got Everybody our first wins. basement kings lined up. It's Virtua Fighter Five. The ground's all fair because most of like the most that any of us have played of it is like thirty minutes in Yakuza Six. Oh. Then I think I win this one. Oh, I, I, I actually played, played a decent. Played it? Yeah, I actually played a decent amount of Virtua Fighter. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Marcus. Marcus has. Marcus has it on tap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, it was. It was Tekken, and then Virtual Fighter for me, uh, only because uh, some of the characters from Virtual Fighter I liked, uh, but I haven't played any of the newer ones. Okay. I think I stopped at like Virtual Fighter three, three. I might have played four. Okay. If someone had it, but uh, I don't remember. So if you've ever wondered like how petty I am, I have been googling the release date for every Dragon Quest. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point it out. I'm sorry. Okay. If you're not sorry, you're being fucking petty. <laughs> are we? 
ha- have I been proven wrong yet? No. Or has that article been proven wrong? Uh, yet? no, not yet. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, sorry. Keep going. Marcus yeah. and, and his fucking Marcus is like Marcus is like uh, old old latent fucking uh, virtual fighter muscle memory just fucking kick it in just being like ah we knew we wasn't gonna leave the gray space for this. For this reason. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, like now, I feel like I'm back. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, who needs multiplication tables when you got bread and butters from for uh, Jackie? I think that's a Virtual <laughs> Fighter character. Yeah, it yeah, is a Virtual Fighter a, character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't forget your other. See, you 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 could play you could play Daryl Live Zakira in Virtual yeah, Fighter. Don't forget <laughs> iconic characters like Akira, Sarah, Pai Chan, Jackie, Jackie, Vanessa, Go, <laughs> Ninja, okay, Ninja. Uh, he's Sumo Kage. Man. No, no, Ninja has a Luchador. Name. It's Kage. Yeah, it's Kage. Yeah. Kage, the ninja. <laughs> oh, he wants to become a hoe. If you're gonna call me a hoe, better put Kage after it. <laughs> Jesus. Way, not to buy you. Leave it. Uh, All right, more news now. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh yeah, they're also releasing Dragon Quest Ten offline. That's interesting. Was it only ever online? Yes. Yeah. It was an MMO. Oh. Oh. Which that one released on a Thursday. (laughs) 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 All right. (laughs) Released on a Thursday. As you see, although raising his hands up, like, what now? (laughs) Myth debunked. So what if the other... 14 the games Orton in the franchise released on a, a weekend. This one released on a Thursday. Yeah. Fuck you, guy. Uh, hold on, what was his fucking name? You, Miyake. Fuck you with the face, buddy. <laughs> you don't know shit about that yeah. Dragon Quest dumb producer. Yeah. Anyway, Baka. Dragon Quest Eleven went back to releasing on Saturday. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. This is this 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 is now information that lives in my head. Cool. <laughs> Goodbye, childhood memory. Uh, speaking of childhood memories, I think uh, Hero has some childhood, or maybe teen, or maybe adult memories of this next news story. I sure hope oh. they're not adult memories. That's. <laughs> <laughs> A bunch of Sonic games are coming out. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> All right, hey, hey, man. What's the thing Sonic related? I, I don't, I don't oh, want to. Listen. I don't want you guys to shoot. I don't want you guys no, to shoot no, me down. No. You can have this one. Yeah, this okay. one's good. You can have this. This is all good news. No, no. I mean, I just, I just mean right. in general. You can have this one. I, I'm not gonna fucking dunk on you for this one. No. Oh, no, no. Okay. You said that you're not gonna get dunked on. I see how it is. All right. Well, <laughs> do it before I change my mind. Mm, this is. This is... <laughs> So, I am actually going to be. So I am. I am. The, I am the. I am the obligatory Sonic fan. With Squishy being obviously the second Sonic fan. Um, so uh, over the over the week, uh, Sega did a thing called Sonic Central, showing stuff for the thirtieth anniversary. The thirtieth anniversary of the blooper. Um, so one of the things that, unfortunately, um, I would be. I would been hyped for, but. It got leaked, like it got leaked and rumored, like months prior to this. Unfortunately, so um, the f- one of the, one of the games that they announced was uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate, which is a um, just kind of a I want to say remastered version of Sonic Colors, which was released originally on the the Wii. Um, it was Sonic's actual. It was it was. The last, uh, the, 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 a good game that was released after Sonic's whole weird dark age, like second dark age slump of, uh, just me- bad to mediocre games. Um, 
which was showing signs from Sonic Sonic Unleashed, um, which Sonic Unleashed slowly down for fall was the fact that it had the werewolf, the the werehog. But um, Sonic Colors is true to form. You only play a Sonic. It was the second game with the boost formula, which is everybody's whole. You gotta run, you gotta just pull the boost button to win or whatever. Um, I'm very I'm very happy that this game came out. That this game's coming out again, um, just so that a lot of people could play it. Because like I said, it is it is one of the better modern Sonic games. Um, though. Personally, um, as a Sonic fan, I am done with the boost formula. Um, it, it brought Sonic to, Sonic to form and stuff like that. That's great and all. But um, I feel like that Sega has, or Sonic Team is relying too much on the too much on the boost formula. So I hope that the, when they showed the new game, which was, uh, has it, has it, has it had a title yet, they don't um, have the boost formula. But... I'm very, I'm very, I'm very excited and very happy to replay again because Sonic Colors was a fun game. Um, I loved a lot of the fucking, a lot of stages. Everything was, all the stages were bright, were all really, were really like Sonic-y and stuff to put it. Um, it's just, it's just, it's a, it's a pretty game. Like it's Sonic, Sonic Colors is a pretty game. It's, it's just fun. Like um, I know that Sonic is not everybody's cup of tea and whatnot, but. Um, if you get a chance, just uh, play play yourselves in, see what see what I like from it. Um, also, with the whole Sonic Central s stuff that they announced, um, they announced uh, um, just some <laughs> some some accessories. <laughs> some accessories. <laughs> yeah, for, for for fans of uh, of hip of hip hop culture. <laughs> <laughs> I, I zoned out on this conversation. What the fuck? Jeff oh, doesn't want to fucking admit that he's gonna buy a Sonic Gold chain. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We were talking about this. <laughs> uh, tell him. Fucking tell him. It. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Tell him how you're gonna do it. Tell him exactly which one you're gonna buy. I'm gonna buy the Sonic. That's right. You're gonna buy the Sonic one. <laughs> so um. <laughs> They, they they showed some Sonic they so they showed some like essentially some <laughs> some bling for Sonic, uh for, shows like a nice a nice dope ass looking chain that has the the face of Sonic Knuckles. Oh Tails my and god! Shadow. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> and I hate the fact that I saw them like oh this looks good. <laughs> um, anyways, <laughs> jumping jumping through that uh they show they show, they mentioned um, uh Sonic Prime uh the new the new Netflix uh cartoon. That's coming out next year. Um, they're going to be showing some Sonic, uh, some Sonic animated shorts on YouTube. Which, like, um, uh, later on this I year. I don't know. After seeing the 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 animated bits that they did for Sonic Mania, those actually look a little yeah. disappointing. Yeah, I, I'll agree with you there. Like, I'm like, it's, it's, um, it's too too. It looks too flash animated. If yeah, you know what and I mean. not like in the good way. Yeah, which there is a good way. And um, Roger Craig Smith, the uh, voice of Sonic, uh, and uh, Chris Boulder Punching Redfield, is back <laughs> to voice the Hedgehog. Um, Wait, what? Chris is going to be his Sonic? No, Chris, yeah, uh, Roger Craig Smith is uh, has always yeah. has always voiced Sonic. Oh, okay. Chris Redfield's um, Wait, he he's the voice Sonic. of. I did not know that. Redfield? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I he's the voice Chris, that Chris Redfield. Serious? He's the voice. He's the voice of Ezio. Yeah, I know that one. Holy shit! So, so now when he punches yeah. boulders, I'm gonna be like, "Oh, you're too weak." <laughs> uh, God, why? <laughs> oh my God! What? What? You guys didn't know no, that? I mean, I did not know that. that one, listen, yeah. all right, listen. You and I did not know that Smile DK was a white Swedish band. All right, you're not allowed to be like. <laughs> you're not allowed to be like. You guys didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Because Knuckle Bomber gave me the exact same fucking reaction when I told him. He's like, yeah, you didn't know that? Fuck you. <laughs> Both I, of thought, you. I, th I thought you guys had known that. No. So I think he's a couple of sweet Yeah, I knew that, but that, I only knew that because I saw the original Butterfly. Uh, I think video. he's, I think he's, I think he's also the current voice of like Captain America in the, Mar in the, like the non video game Marvel stuff, like the cartoons and stuff. 
Would it make you feel better if I told you he was Siegfried? No, I don't need this knowledge. Do you want Soul Calibur? No. <laughs> so, how did you get to the, to the Soul Calibur so quickly? Well, you're too slow. I blast through with Sonic slow. Speed. <laughs> Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to dunk on you and eat some chili cheese dogs. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Jesus. Sorry about your kids. You want some chili dogs? <laughs> I hate this. I hate uh, this knowledge. <laughs> I hate when I find out voice actors need to do more than one role to make a living. <laughs> Remember, Ivy, if the soul edge touches you in a bad place, that's a no go. God damn it. Different song, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's Jaleel White. Uh, that's Jaleel White, yeah. Jaleel White. Um, uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, aside from Sonic Colors being announced, I don't know if you guys talked about the, the Sonic collection of Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. Sonic CD. And Knuckles. No, yeah. and, and Knuckles yeah, as Knuckles. well, because um, most most often not, uh, a lot of a lot of Sonic, uh, like Sonic collection games do not release Sonic and Knuckles together. Um, they just use like Sonic 3 and then you got Sonic and Knuckles and stuff, so this is actually fucking a big, a big moment for old school Sonic fans. So they don't have to like you know play separate things, and stuff. We can actually have the whole fucking experience. Yep. And then they and also there teased. was always a rumor. Nope. There's always been a rumor about uh, Sonic Three, like that. Um, Michael Jackson working on the soundtrack. Uh, kind of like that. Well, that one, but like, um, it's the fact that um, that a lot of they couldn't like re-release the games because. Uh, Something about the music, I believe. So, this is like, this is a big plus for everybody for for Sonic fans and whatnot. Um, as a as a Sonic fan, I'm excited. Like, and I pray that freaking the new Sonic game that they that they showed does not have the boost formula. And to the point where I don't want I don't, that I could make I could have an, uh, a defense of it being other than the music's good. Oh, so have you you have, have you you haven't heard about the the four chan leak about it? Oh God, no! <laughs> it's what? it is a four chan leak, so take it with a grain okay. of salt. Yeah. So one, it's it's a four chan leak, but one, it was also a leak. Uh, I think it was like three or. Three or four months before the trailer came out, and uh, mm-hmm. and I guess according to that leak, which there is, <laughs> this goes back to that thing I was joking about yesterday. Uh, there is compelling evidence <laughs> that that leak is accurate, and uh, according to the leaker, um, in its early stages, which it's not that early, if they're doing focus testing for it, because the dude said he was a focus tester for it. Uh, it wasn't very good so far. And it's heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild. Like, I don't. Hmm. Hmm. But apparently, it might be called Sonic Rangers. Hmm. Hmm. I'm hoping that leak isn't real because hmm. I would also like to have. Uh, like, listen. Okay, part of me wants the Sonic games to kind of keep being shitty so I can keep dunking on Sonic fans, but part of me, Ow. a slightly bigger part Ow. of me. Like fifty two percent, kind of wants a good Sonic game so that Sonic fans can get something good, or at least three D Sonic fans can get something good, uh, so they can stop believing Sonic Adventure one and two were good. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want you I want y'all to have a good game that isn't Sonic Generations and Sonic Colors. I want you to have more. <laughs> Sonic Mania. Well, that's not. Yeah, we, we we have unleashed if you ca- if you take out the fucking. But <laughs> if you take exact, out the red exactly hog. though, right? We God have damn this it! Game, but if you what take out like, half of the game, what about like Sonic Riders or Racing? Sonic Riders, yeah, is fun. that's a racing game though, right? It's not a three D Sonic. Mm. I just I want you. Last word I was okay. I want you to have better games. I want you guys. To, I want I want Sonic fans to get what they deserve. Because God damn it, Sonic. I, <laughs> For as much grief as I like to give the Sonic fandom, they deserve a fucking bone every once in a while. 
that isn't another fucking 2D remake. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like Sonic Generations is good, but half that game is a fucking 2D remake. Yeah. Like, um, uh, I like. Here's the thing. I don't mind the, I don't mind the open world part. Like, cause the the thought of like you know gotta go fast in the open world sounds pretty fucking awesome. But if he says it's not good so far, that's kind of that's really disheartening to me. But at the same time, like one of the one of the fucking one of the shittiest things about being a Sonic fan is the fact that Sonic fans are into are like fucking so divisive about Sonic games and whatnot. And As is it's well, yeah, that's true. But like, fuck, man, I would I would I would like to see an open world Sonic game. Like, I think I think that would be interesting. Um, I seen. How some of the um, how some of the fan games look like with that stuff, it looks pretty awesome. Um, but I really do hope that they don't stray too far. You know, like it's Oop. like the, the yeah. I don't I don't want to stray too far from it. Like I do want like my my standard zones and whatnot. You know, but like. Just don't don't go too deep in don't 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 stray too deep Sonic Team and Sega. Um, everybody's gonna enjoy it. I know I know that I know that there'll be there there'll be the fans and the defenders of it. But uh, yeah, just please please show me more than the teaser. The teaser looked dope, but I need to see I need to see some gameplay. The teaser looked dope and some music. All two seconds of Sonic running. Hey, that's all. That's all. Some. That's With all. Sometimes we need. Foot, as opposed to the straight foot. I saw. I saw that discourse. <laughs> Why are you? Obs- yeah, like... I, okay, you're not obsessed with feet, but you're oddly observant of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Me? Yeah. What? What it's other the... shoe? Final Fantasy fourteen. Pe- <laughs> what about? <laughs> The, the, the square the square enix logo oh yeah okay, okay. <laughs> on the moon on his shoe <laughs> yeah yeah I'm, i am now keeping track of how many mentions of shoes you make great <laughs> now i have to be fucking conscientious of this dumb fucking thing because i made two observations one of them wasn't even my observation i just saw a, a fucking tiktok about a guy overanalyzing the shape of Sonic's shoe uh-huh. and thought it would be relevant to bring up. But now now I, I'm going to be the weird shoe guy, which I don't know if, <laughs> if that's better or worse than being a weird foot guy. Because only time will tell. Depends on how you go. Depends on how you go. Yeah. Really, I think the Man. biggest crime here that's happened is that Sonic Colors wasn't called Sonic Recolors. Yeah. Damn, that would have been good actually. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> uh yeah. Alright. I I have nothing else uh, to say. Sonic recolor not recolor. God damn it. Sonic colors uh <laughs> deserves deserves some credit for inspiring uh Ori and the Blind Forest mechanics. Yeah. Really? I was watching a de- I was watching oh, wow. a developer interview and they're talking about how like a couple of the mechanics in I think the second Ori game were heavily inspired because one of the developers was playing Sonic Colors, and he's like, "This is fucking cool. Can we do something like this?" Uh, and that specific example was like the drill thing. Um, so you guys, you can get a little drill color dude, or whatever. Even though drill isn't a color. Um, but yeah, so like, you know, there you go, go Sonic. Sonic is a better yeah. inspiration than it is a game half the time, and I don't know if that's great or or, or bad. Well, like, I don't know, Sonic, like, people have fucking, are... Sonic inspires a lot. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, and I feel like their track record is, I think, they're better inspirers than they are executing their own ideas. Um, I haven't played Colors, but I'm assuming Colors is good. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Anyways, I just wanted to bring up that Ori thing, because I thought that was fucking neat. And then, like, the fact that, like, two weeks later... That was announced. I was like, "Oh, that's fucking cool." Yeah. 
So I think that's it for Sonic News then. I think so. Which means we, we get to talk about... Uh, oh, no, that's it. We're done. That's it. That's a wrap, boys. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's it, my dudes. It's going to be an easy podcast to edit. Yeah. Like, freaking... Like, I, the only thing I want to add for, like, uh, for um, just the Sonic stuff is that fucking John Carp- Carpenter loves Sonic. Oh, what? Yeah. He even likes, he even likes Unleashed. What? John yeah. Carpenter? John yeah. Carpenter of The Thing like Sonic? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Google! Why would you fucking autocomplete this for me? <laughs> it's true. He even says that he likes the one where he transforms into a werewolf. God damn it! <laughs> just, just putting, just putting knowledge. Everything is Sonic. <laughs> Your lives are a lie. <laughs> wow, that's so weird. God, wow. Okay. Everything seems so. again. The... Watch preserve fucking. Then you have like fucking like just everything. Everything manga related just is is no, just inspires no, no. Sonic. If, if, if you Sonic want to make girl. an allegory to this, this has got to be something like I don't know. Uh, what, what the fuck is her name? That the bitch that wrote Twilight. She's like, oh, I love Berserk. <laughs> Oh, that oh. Don't, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Let, let, let the, let the man rest. Let, let Kyle, let Kyle, let Kyle I'm not have that. that. Don't give that to Kyle. To this. <laughs> it is, it, like, god damn it. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, we're, I, I, I don't know. It's, I don't, People like Sonic, dude. Maybe it's shit. fucking like Jim Henson being like, uh, you know, weird interview or like his fucking grandchildren are fucking taking out his belongings and it's like, holy shit. Why does he have all these old manga of Berserk? <laughs> Actually, no, that wouldn't make sense. Jim Henson was a weird dude. Yeah, like Jim. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's fucking weird, all right? I'm just that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Sonic, Sonic, Sonic is Sonic is life. No, that's Shrek. Shrek. No, oh, well, Shrek is love. Yeah. Cue, cue that picture of like of the OTP of Shadow the Hedgehog and Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, I think that's it for Adam Sandler was such a tokusatsu fan. What? I mean, fuck, what the fuck? That, no, what are you saying? No, that's not. That's not. Oh. I don't think that's real. I Good. just made that up. Good. But Good. but to to make you feel better, John Cena is a fan of anime. Yes, yes. he does like his fist of the North Star. Yes. He's a classy guy. Yeah. Um, uh, that that does remind me of one time when I was scrolling through Twitter, there was like a, a poster for Uncut Gems. But it was styled in such a way that it looked like an, it looks like how the Doctor Who ads are generally done. And I'm like, what the fuck is Adam Sandler the new Doctor Who? Am I gonna <laughs> actually watch Doctor Who now? Uh, and then that led to me and a joke, uh, a joke between me and some other friends go- creating a Twitter account that's just Adam Sandler where he doesn't belong. <laughs> Um, do you remember the old those old um those old uh, Chinese uh, Thor posters that should look like showed like Thor and Loki as like some kind of couple or whatever that has some kind of romantic relationship? No. Oh my God! Let's see if I can look it up. Thor. Oh God! I'm looking at it now. What the fuck? You see it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I gotta find, I gotta find this image because <laughs> Just type in Thor Chinese no, no, poster. No, no, no. I got something you. Else. Uh... And I don't know if I liked it or retweeted it or something, but it was, uh, I might not have, and now I'm sad. Uh, are we, are we done recording, by the way? Can I, can I we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna end the podcast yeah, right we're, here, we're guys. We're already looking forward to yes. for, for, for next week. Oh, we're yeah, that's right, we have that segment, yeah. Yeah, uh, what's, what's, what's coming out for this week for you guys? Uh, Virtual Fighter 5, I guess. Not having to boot up for, uh, Listening to for it, yeah. Virtual Fighter Five. <laughs> um, have we ran that joke into the ground yet? <laughs> nonsense. Uh, <laughs> um, Kyle. Uh, <clears throat> pardon. 
starting a new job, playing Dungeons and Dragons some more. Uh, yeah, mainly starting a new job because like I'm super out of cash and like I've been eating canned soups for like the last two weeks, and it's really done a number on my stomach. Oh, it's, it's not great. Not 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 having straight up not having a good time, guys. <laughs> All right. Um, as for me, uh, obviously, Yakuza, uh, Final Fantasy still going on. Uploads of all the things. Um, PK will be coming back on Webtoon. Um, and uh, tune in on Friday for us uh, streaming. For probably actually me streaming. Um, as of what game, still don't know yet. Uh, maybe maybe I'll actually sit down and do Titanfall. It's a, it's a toss-up between either Titanfall or Monster Hunter. And Final Fantasy. All right. Um, so. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, okay. As of now, I'm Mr. Lee Hero. Who are you guys? Uh, it's your boy, Steamboat Taco. I'm Uncle Bomber. And it's your dude from another world, Isakai. All right. Take care, everybody. And we'll see you next time.